to another exciting episode of Superstar Cinema, where we, where we take a closer look at the entertainment side of sports entertainment. I am your ho- one of your hosts, the Internet Soapbox Mark. He is another one of your hosts. I'm the hobo, the other host. That's, now that that's taken care of, we're going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy and how great of a movie it is. But before we do, let's take a look at some, some video. We're just... <laughs> so here we are. Thief, two thugs, an assassin, and a maniac. But we're not gonna stand by as evil wipes out the galaxy. I guess we're stuck together. Partners. So just like Hercules, we're gonna talk about spoilers. You should have seen the movie already. What the hell are you doing watching this? Go watch the movie. But if you want us to help support us by watching the video, we appreciate it. Yeah, watch us first. Yes, watch this. And skip to the end. I don't think I put the annotation into Hercules. <laughs> no, I really don't think you did. <laughs> Hobo, what did you pop for in this movie? Oh, well, I mean... I, That's a short list. The movie the movie as a whole, I don't want to sound like everybody else. Everybody's saying how great this movie is. And uh, like it's... Like it's, you know, Star Wars, our, our generations, or the next generation, Star Wars... Or whatever. But this is the greatest movie I've ever seen in my whole life! They're so relatable. I mean, right off the bat, you're introduced to Peter Quill, who who is a boy when you first meet him. And instantaneously, you feel for this child. I'd, I, I, to start a movie like that, the, the main character being so pitiable. Which means everything that follows, and he does some pretty scandalous stuff to start the film off. Everything that follows is sort of like okay but look at look at how hard he had it it's all right that he does these these things that are not so great because man he's he had it so hard you kind of see why he does and you also see him change due to the introduction of gamora and rocket and groot and drax and you really see this group of people grow together both as a unit and individually with the help of the other person their emptiness becomes whole. And it was one of the best meetings of a team. Like, for Avengers, we got origin stories most of the time. Except for, like, the Hulk, kind of, and... Well, everybody everybody knows those characters so well. You had to introduce an entire team of, of characters that nobody really knows. And who are... For lack of a better term, the anti-heroes. I think we're living now really in the era of the anti-hero. I would agree and with that. This, this is the perfect encapsulation of that. We gotta hand it to Dave Batista. He did a wonderful job. Everybody did a wonderful job, but Dave, yeah. this I was... I think th- he was the underdog of the cast. I mean, not actually being considered, you know, an actor. Quote-unquote. Uh, Quote-unquote. I mean, granted, he's, he's done enough pieces at this point in his career. You checked out his IMDb. He's done more than a few things. But he's, I mean, still the underdog. He's the most untested of the actors in this ensemble cast. Especially on a blockbuster stage, and he proved it. He really did. And it, He had that presence. Yeah. And and, it, and his, his heart, which I, I, I read an interview with that he had with somebody, and he said that he brought to this character a lot of heart. There's a lot of anger and a lot of, a lot of muscle and screaming and tearing. He's a barbarian. He doesn't wear a shirt. The main villain in this was... Was nuts. Ronan the accused. That that was Ronan. Lee Pace under that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. This that the king of the elves was also Ronan the accuser. It's, you don't usually uh, do like multiple characters for Marvel, but because the two were so different from each other, I think it worked fine. What? No, I mean what? from Lord of the Rings. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's different okay. Elves. Different elves. Yeah. Different elves. Though. Uh, in one of the things that was very easy to notice in the collector's collection was a dark elf that we saw in Thor 2. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of stuff in the collector's room that Cosmo, it was so cool to see Cosmo, uh, fucking Howard the Duck. That's, that's it. I don't want, I don't even want to say anymore. Just fucking Howard the Duck. It might be hard, but Hobo, did you have anything in this movie that gave you that you give any sort of heat? Maybe some of the some of the aliens were a little too human to be thought of as aliens. I think I know what you're gonna say. Why were the Rav- why did the Ravagers have Southern accents? Yeah, <laughs> because they visit Earth so often, they could have picked up 
something somehow. Uh, that's how I reasoned it away. But yeah, the, I mean, the, the and that's not even really a problem because that that type of mindset and those quote unquote type of people, you get that type of character instantly. Yeah, you you totally understand right away what type of people they are, and it worked. It yeah. worked. You didn't have to go through any sort of subtext. You kind of understood immediately who they were. The threatening with the the hot poker arrow. That was so cool. That was uh, Yondu. He just kept flashing it the entire movie, and you're going, either it's going to be something really cool, or it's not going to be anything at all, and this guy's just a load of hot air. And then he actually uses it and kills everyone and blows up a ship by whistling, and then you go, okay, he's a super badass, and I'm <laughs> sure he'll be back. I would have liked to see uh, an intelligent species of alien that had... What, that was more than a humanoid form, or more than a a, a like. Well, we saw we see the Kree. Um, I don't I don't know the cosmic Marvel as much as I should. Yeah. But there were there was the the yellow species. There was the 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 red pink species. Um, but yeah, it's the uh, and it's sort of like the Star Trek where they're all they're all in the basically the humanoid form. Even Groot, who's a plant, is is a humanoid form, being four limbs and a head. Yeah, there, there was nothing really super alien. It was two legs, two arms, yeah. and uh, questionable features. But it was right. all sort of the same humanoid. But, I mean, you that's know. It's okay. Yeah, I it's mean, fine. Star Trek got away with that for years and years and still to this day. But that was that was one thing I liked about Star Wars was they're different creatures that develop differently and aren't just stuck to one form. Although, it sort of goes to the idea that the universe has a perfect form. And that uh, maybe the humanoid form is that perfect form for intelligent life, although that's kind of like We're getting grabbing it. your dick and going, this is perfect right here! As much as we enjoyed Hercules, I don't think I would care to see it in the theater again. I would see this. Compared to this? Compared to this. This was the, visually, this was one of the most stimulating things that, the color is so vibrant, everything mm -hmm. was perfect. It was like looking into a little... A little window to a world that was completely beyond yours. And it was real. It wasn't a man-made thing. This isn't something we're pretending to do. This felt real. Like like you were watching something that was real that, that maybe you could see or get to someday. But it was just, just beyond your grasp. But it was real because you could see it and you could feel it. And, then, and that, those are the most compelling stories to me. The ones that make you, you feel and make you really believe because you really believed. Very passionate about this subject. <laughs> Welcome back from non-spoiler territory. The train has arrived. To to sum it up, this is one of the best movies that Marvel has ever made, and that probably anybody has ever made. And if you have eyes and not even ears, you don't need ears. Go see this movie for the visual spectacle that it is. And Although, you know what, ears would help because they proved one thing in this movie that Earth has the best music. Very much so. In the galaxy. Anybody can dance to it. Yes. You, not even going to say it. I wanted to, but I can't. Because <laughs> we're out of the spoiler train territory. So keep the conversation going down below. You can contact us on Twitter as well as our Facebook. You can find me on Twitter at Soapbox Mark. The two of us on Facebook at Soapbox Car TV. And Hobo at True Hobo. You and ProWrestlingTees.com slash Hobo. Never forget. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Superstar Cinema. That's a lot of us. And we will see you next time.